received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all, and these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the, the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth this morning. As I bring the Lord's message to you this morning, first of all, by the way of introduction, I want this morning, first of all, to encourage you for a wee moment, in your own mind's eye, that is, to imagine this morning that you're at the starting line of a cross-country race. You don't know how far or how close the finishing line is. That's one thing you don't know. But here's the race this morning. It's going to take us up steep hills. It's going to take us along very unfavorable ground, ground that's going to try us, grounds that's going to test us, grounds that's going to take every ounce of energy to see that we finish the race. And in your mind's eye, just for a wee moment, the race has begun. No sign of the finishing line in sight. We've run steep hills. We've run through ground not good for running. And I want you to notice now you're a lot different from what you were when you began the race. Because fatigue has now set in. And crump has set in. And tiredness has now set in. And you're not the person that you were since you started the race. At the start of the race, there was no crump. At the starting line, there was no fatigue. At the starting line this morning, there was no tiredness. Now, let's be a spectator of a race now, just for a wee moment. And I want you to notice the athletes now as they line up. Man, they're bursting with energy, jumping up and down, can't wait to get started. But then we'll come now to the finishing line. They're a different type of person altogether at the finishing line. Why? Because it took 
everything they had. To finish well. Full of energy at the starting line. But at the finishing line they have collapsed with exhaustion. You see, child of God, this morning when I look at the athlete, he's a different, he or she is a different person at the finishing line than they are at the starting blocks. That race demanded everything for them to finish well. It's not how you start that counts, child of God. It's how you finish. Many have started well, and many for years have continued well. Ah, but mind you, they didn't finish well. Started well. Didn't finish well. Let me tell you a few superstars this morning. Think of Gideon. Gideon, the mighty man of God, started well, continued well. But in Judges 8 and verse 27, he didn't finish well. The great man Gideon that he was didn't finish well. You remember how he called for an ephod. And it says what because of what he'd done, the whole nation went a whoring after it. And that's the wording in the Bible. Gideon started well, and Mani was running well. But I'll tell you, he didn't end well. I'll tell you, Solomon didn't end well either. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. Oh, the mighty man that started well and ran well, I'll tell you, he didn't finish well. He married many waves, and they turned his heart away from God. Many great men of the Bible, I'll tell you, there's very few who ended the race well. Started well. Continued well. Let me warn you, child of God, as the Lord has warned me this week, you can start well and continue well but you mightn't end well. I wonder, is that your desire this morning? I wonder, is that the longing of your heart this morning? Finishing well. Many great men have brought glory to God at the start. And brought much glory to God for years. And brought great disgrace to God at the finish. And they're all a warning to us all. Now here's what the Lord wants to say to you. And as he has been saying to me, you and I don't know how far or how close the finishing line is. But you remember this, child of God. The moment you got saved, that's when the starting pistol went off. And you and I are in a race. And don't ignore the race that is set before us this morning. Did we look at Hebrews 12 and Verse number one, just for a wee moment. And the writer says, Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed with so many, so, with so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Now, here's the fundamentals for the race. Now, listen to the fundamentals for the race. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. You want to finish well, child of God. You need to get the fundamentals there right. So many Christians are, are running slow. So many Christians are sluggish in the race. Too many weights attached, weights of the world. And too many are sluggish and almost stop because of sin. Wonder are you running well this morning, child of God? That's the fundamentals. But here's the framework for the race. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. But it's not the fundamentals God wants us to look at this morning. And it's not the framework for the race God wants to speak to us either. Last but not least and most importantly, it's the focus throughout the race. Here's my text. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen, child of God, it's not looking unto pastors. You'll only fail miserably. You'll not finish well if you're looking to pastors. And that's not looking on the Christian friends either, even though they encourage us. Oh, friend, in this race that is set before us, it's looking on to Jesus. That's the focus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Do you see, child of God, if you want to finish well, don't take your eyes of Jesus. You want to finish well, keep looking unto him. For men, you Peter took his eyes off him one day. And the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, it's when he started going down. So many Christians have grown cold in the race. And the problem is they've taken their eyes off the Lord Jesus. But I want to bring you, as we are in this race this morning, God has showed me four hurdles that hinder God's people in the race for him. First of all, there's the hurdle of temptation. Mind you, that trips a lot of believers. Up. Then there comes another hurdle that hinders a lot of believers in this race that is set before us. It's known as the, the hurdle of accusation. And mind you, accusation has brought a lot of believers down in the race. And then you'll notice another hurdle that God showed me. It's the hurdle of rejection. And mind you, the hurdle of rejection has caused a lot of believers to fall. I'll tell you, child of God, many a good believer has went on their mouth and nose at the hurdle of temptation. Many believers fell at the hurdle of accusation. Many believers have fell at the hurdle of rejection. And many have fell at the hurdle of humiliation. Now, I want you to look at those four hurdles. Temptation, accusation, rejection, and humiliation. Because the four of them have each got in common. You know what those four hurdles have in common? Those four, four hurdles were hurdles that the Lord Jesus himself had to come. Let's first of all talk about the race, the hurdle this morning of temptation. 
Maybe this is where you're struggling this morning. Because mind you, the hurdle of temptation has brought many down. And I'll tell you, this is a difficult one to get over. You remember this morning that this was the first hurdle the Lord Jesus came to. The first hurdle that he came to as he began his public, his earthly ministry. The hurdle of temptation. And I'll tell you something now, child of God. The hurdle of temptation has brought many a good child of God down. But listen, child of God, what the Bible says concerning the Lord Jesus. It says concerning him, who was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Listen, child of God, look unto Jesus this morning. He knows all about the power of temptation. He knows all about the appealing of temptation. Temptation's appealing this morning. Temptation is attractive this morning. And temptation is powerful. And I want to say this this morning because I believe this is how a lot of believers fall. A lot of believers fall because they think they have failed miserably because they have been tempted. Wonder you here this morning, child of God, and you feel bad because you have been tempted? Let me tell you, the Lord Jesus was tempted. Being tempted is not sin this morning, but yielding to that temptation is sin. The Lord Jesus, as the Bible teaches us, has been tempted in all points as we are. Wonders of someone here this morning. And God is bringing this hurdle before you because that's where you are. You're being tempted to do something wrong. I want you to notice how the, when the Lord Jesus was tempted, the Lord Jesus was tempted at a weak moment. You remember when he was in hunger in the wilderness. And mind you, the devil can tempt you at the weak moment. And the devil speaks at the weak moment. And you remember what the devil said unto him. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. I wonder this morning, listen, child of God, this is none of my business. I'm just bringing the Lord's message. I wonder this morning, is there someone here and you're in a tight spot this morning? You're in a difficult place. You've come to this hurdle along your track that's saying to you, listen, don't try and jump this hurdle. There's an easy way around. Maybe there's a businessman here this morning. Things may not be easy at present, I don't know. Or maybe there's somebody being tempted in some way, maybe to come together with an unsaved business partner, and you're tempted to go in with them this morning, mind you, you know what the Bible says. Amos chapter 3, verse 3, can two walk together except they be the group? You're being tempted to do wrong this morning. There's a way over this hurdle this morning. It's looking on to Jesus. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen, brother, Listen, sister, 
looking on to Jesus will take you clear over the hurdle of temptation. wonder this morning, is there someone being tempted? And any way are you being tempted? Listen, I don't need to know. God knows you know. Maybe it's an adulterous affair. I'll tell you it has happened. I don't know. I'm only a messenger. You yield to temptation of any kind. It'll cost you dearly. Many have, many of God's children will cross the finishing line, but it won't be with a clean sheet. It will be with a clean heart. Because here's the problem. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, or God's son this morning, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, will cleanse away the condemnation, but it won't cleanse away the consequence. You still live with the consequence. The child of God this morning, if you're at the hurdle of temptation, Look unto Jesus. Don't be looking to anybody else. Look you unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Because the only way over the hurdle is by looking unto him. He cleared the hurdle before you. And through him you'll clear the hurdle. Oh, child of God, this hurdle, many, many has fell on the race Many didn't finish well because they fell at this hurdle. The hurdle. Temptation. Then we come along into the race again and we're coming to another hurdle that has brought a lot of people down. wonder are you facing this one this morning? It's the hurdle of accusation. Many believers face this hurt. Let me tell you, I have faced and many people fall at this hurdle. Do you know why they fall at this hurdle? Because they fail to keep looking to Jesus. wonder this morning, is there someone here You're finding it difficult because you can't get over this hurdle. The hurdle of accusation. People talking about you. Do you remember what the Lord Jesus said in John 8, verse 46? Which of you convinceth me of sin? What did the Jews say? Say not we well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. Can you imagine saying that concerning the Son of God? Nobody faced accusation more than my blessed Savior. And friend, they made him out to be almost Satan himself, and him went about doing good wonder this morning, are you a victim of accusation? People talking about you. And maybe that person is some gutless Christian. He can't come and talk to you to your face. I wonder this morning, are you facing that hurdle and you're fighting it and you can't get over it this morning? You cannot run the race that is set before you because of it. And they're saying all manner of evil things against you. Oh, I faced it. Mind you, it's not nice. 
But let me tell you as a personal word of testimony what got me over. Looking on to Jesus. As he had to endure accusation, then I'm called. Many years ago, there was a young evangelist, just 21 years of age, just 21, on fire for God. Started to conduct mission. Many people were getting saved. Invitations from churches began to come for him to come and to preach in his church. Then these churches wanted to get him to conduct gospel missions, and each mission was a fruitful mission. He was well known over the United States of America. One gospel crusade, many come forward to be counseled. A number of elders went into the counseling room with them. And this young lassie come. But the whole moral of the story was he tried to encourage her to go to speak to her sister in the Lord, but she was adamant to speak to him. And foolishly, he was left in the room on his own. She tried to make a pass of it. He took himself away, and because he refused, she ran out of the vestry or out of the counseling room shouting, help, come quick. And the whole story goes, the mission and everything, the crusade was to cancel. And it was the talk of the city. The young evangelist called for the elders and called for the deacons and called for the overseers and called for the parents of the young lassie to come and have a meeting. His name was in the papers, ridiculed in the papers for what he'd done, for most of them. And at this meeting, when the meeting was called, he, you called the girl Cindy. That was her name. I read it. And the young man said to her, he says, listen, Cindy. My reputation is in the lane. And the, the reputation of the gospel is being put in the lane. And God's name being disgraced is on the line. And he says to her, you know and I know what happened and didn't happen in that room. And the girl broke down. And tears began to flood down her cheeks and he says, he says, he was in. He, after a period of time, said, it almost drove him to suicide because of the disgrace that his name was brought under. Dear child of God, the only way over the hurdle of accusation is by looking on to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Nobody conquered that more than him. They called him a deceiver. They called him Beelzebub, the chief of the devil. I wonder this morning, is there one at that hurdle? And perhaps you feel yourself falling. Listen, I'm going to tell you from the Lord this morning, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, will put you back in track. Thirdly, the hurdle of rejection. And there's nobody ever faced that hurdle more than him. You know what it says? 
having came unto his own, and his own received him not. I wonder this morning, is there a Christian brother or a Christian sister? This morning, and you're at this hurt. And listen, it was his own that rejected him. And I wonder, is there a brother and sister in this meeting this morning and you feel rejected under your own roof? And you cannot see a way over this hurt. Many Christians face this hurt. And they don't face it in the assembly. They face it in the home. Wonder, sister, are you at this hurdle this morning? Brother, are you at this hurdle? I'm telling you, it's not nice. I have been there. Maybe this morning you're feeling rejected in home, not in the street, not in the assembly, not in the fellowship, in the home. You face this hurdle this morning, and kith and kin are against you. I'm telling you now, child of God, Look, ever to Jesus. For mind you, he will carry you through. I can't. I wish I could. But there are hurdles that believers face. And rejection's one of them that pastors and friends can't get you over. Because that rejection comes from the home, within the home, family, mother, father, husband, wife, sister, brother. There's a lot of Christians rejected today in their own home. But the only way you'll conquer it, sister, the only way you'll conquer it, brother, listen to me, is to keep looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Why? Because he knows and he feels for you. Because he's been there. And then finally, the hurdle of humiliation. Nobody ever had a cross that one on my blessed Savior. You remember him at the cross? How they stripped him. And how they mocked him and scorned him. And how they humiliated him. I wonder this morning. Do you feel this? You're being humiliated because you're a Christian. You're being humiliated at work because you're standing for the Lord. Now we'll look at verse number two again. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was before him endured the cross, despising the sheep. Oh, that hurdle has brought many down. You see, child of God, in this race this morning that is set before us, there will be many hurdles that you'll have to face before you hit the, f the finishing line.
but looking on to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, is the one who will give us the victory over each and every one of them when we keep looking on to him. I wonder this morning, child of God, as you and I face these hurdles, mind you will will, let us keep Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20 and verse 24 to mind. And let's keep it to mind. What it says. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. Child of God, if you and I want to finish well, cross the line well, we'll do so by looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And here's my last word to you. Keep you looking onto Jesus, onto Jesus, with the eye of your faith until the moment you see him face to face. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn is number 400.